Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. Have you ever wondered what the biggest mistakes are that noobs always make? Well, in this video, I'll be going over five of the biggest of those mistakes and we'll be going over how not only to avoid them, but how to improve your game if you make these mistakes. That said, as always, subscriptions are the single biggest thing that helps to grow my channel. So if you like this video or my style, feel free to be rad and click the subscription button and notification bell. That said, let's get into the video. So this list will be a good combination of things that you will experience in game, so in matches, and also in the menu, so things that will make you most efficient in researching, purchasing, things of that nature. And first and foremost, don't research vehicles that are way out of your tier. You will receive a huge RP or research point penalty if you research more than one tier out of the vehicle that you're playing. Better said, if you're playing tier 4 and you're trying to research tier 2, you will receive a 70% RP penalty, making it so that even if you had an amazing match with boosters, it'll be largely for naught as you will lose out on most of it. Thankfully, your silver lines will still be gained at the same rate. The RP penalty grows as the tier difference grows as well. If you're playing a tier 1 and you think that it'll be an easy way to earn RP to research a tier 6, you are wrong, as you'll be receiving an 80% RP penalty. The max penalty, which is earned by using a higher ranking vehicle to research a lower ranking vehicle, such as a tier 7 to research a tier 1, will result in a 95% RP penalty, meaning that if you got 1,000 RP at the end of a match, it will only give you 50 RP towards researching that vehicle. I've linked the chart in the description below if you want a handy reference guide. Again, when using a regular tech tree vehicle, you will only be able to research up to one tier above or below you without penalty. A way to skirt around this penalty is to purchase a premium vehicle, as you will be able to research any vehicle in your tech tree through the next rank without penalty. For example, you can use a tier 4 premium tank to research a tier 1 without penalty. You can use that same vehicle to research through tier 5. This is where the allure for high ranking premium vehicle comes in, because if playing with, for example, the F5C, you can research the entirety of the American Air Tech Tree, at least as it currently stands, without penalty and, because it has a premium bonus, you'll get a nice RP and Silver Lion boost as well. Know this and you will grind your tech trees much, much quicker. And also, if you have a premium vehicle, especially one that you like, definitely give that one your Silver Lion boosters. It'll go a longer way than if you do it towards a regular tech tree vehicle. Well, if you play Air RB, if you play Ground RB, then definitely include that premium vehicle in your lineup. For number two, don't outspend your in-game skill level and experience. Simply, what I mean is that there are tons of premium vehicles that you can purchase with real money in War Thunder. These vehicles can be anywhere from Tier 1, which are the lowest ranking vehicles in-game, through top tier, or just about top tier at this point, though technically speaking, at currently, you can purchase the Leopard 2PL, which is a top tier vehicle with Golden Eagles. One of the most common things I see when new players purchase a higher tier vehicle, primarily those that are tier 5 and above, is that they get crushed in every match that they use it in. These vehicles will oftentimes be $50 or $60 USD, which is a lot to spend on a single vehicle that you have no idea how to use. Start slow, experience the game at lower levels first, and if you want, go buy yourself a premium beginner's pack. They are really good, and they have one for just about every nation in-game, at least thus far, outside of Israel. Build your skill and then get used to higher level play once you're used to War Thunder. Top tier, especially with tanks, is incredibly different from lower tier matches, and as such, you will have a ton to learn, such as using equipment, sighting in your cannon, etc. It is far different from lower tier regardless of the type of vehicle that you use, and it is almost universally much faster paced. Save yourself the money and your sanity. Buy a lower tier premium vehicle first, such as the B1 Tear Tank or the TA-154A1 Interceptor. These are both excellent vehicles, they don't cost a ton, and will help you with the grind. Try them out, have fun, then move on to the faster stuff. Trust me, top tier is way more stressful than lower tier, regardless of if it's AB, RB, air, ground, naval, whatever. At least let yourself enjoy War Thunder before you turn the game into a chore. For number three, if you have a ton of vehicles that you've unlocked but you haven't purchased them with silver lines yet and you do not need them currently to progress, don't waste your time and money. Wait until the sales come around. Same goes with if you don't need a premium vehicle or premium account immediately. 
but you're looking to buy one. This said, for the Silver Lion vehicle sales, it makes no sense if you're using a higher tier premium vehicle to unlock your tech tree and then you purchase every single vehicle below it. If you're not actively using that tech tree, it is pointless and a huge waste of money to go ahead and back purchase all of the vehicles that you've unlocked, especially if you have a premium vehicle that you use to unlock them. If you wait until typically early to mid-May, you'll typically have a nice 30% sale on all Silver Lion vehicles in game, whereas the summer sale in late June or early July will give you upwards of 50% off most premium packs and premium accounts. You will typically also see rolling sales on in-game premium vehicles that cost Golden Eagles in the summer sale as well. No need to waste excess Silver Lions or real money when you could just wait a few months or even a few weeks and save tons of money, Silver Lions, and time. For number four on this list, in much the same way, don't waste your money on the item shop. I am telling you guys firsthand, it is a huge waste. Of course, you can get lucky on some of the items in there, but those that win an item in the chest before you've spent the equivalent GE to purchase the vehicle from the tech tree anyways are incredibly rare and lucky people. By the time you win any vehicle from the rookie crates, you will have likely spent hundreds or thousands more GE than you would have if you just purchased the vehicle regularly. Even the boosters are not that good of a use of GE, as they cost far more GE than they're worth, at least if you're experiencing somewhat average matches when you use them. If you got the GE to burn, directly buy a premium vehicle and premium time. These will be much more effective at helping you in game. The item shop is just a front for Gaijin's gambling ring. Unless it's a limited release vehicle, such as the Black Prince, do not go ahead and purchase it from the item shop because if you can just purchase it again from the regular tech tree, it is much more worth it to just go ahead, pay it up front, and buy it from the regular tech tree. Very few people will be able to earn the vehicle from the item shop before they spend over what they would have if they just purchased it again from the tech tree. And finally, for number five, this is somewhat of a two-parter but they're both related. Don't get tunnel vision when fighting enemies and don't forget to help allies. I've raised this point in previous videos, but it cannot be overstated. Never focus on a single enemy, no matter how enticing it might be, especially if other allies or enemies are around. Focus whoever is the biggest threat to you or your teammates, not who is the biggest bullet sponge. I see far too often players lining up to chase a single bomber, when the reincarnation of the Red Baron on the enemy team is shooting down your ally team because they have no assistance. Always focus on the biggest threat. In ground matches, if you destroy an enemy's cannon breach and another enemy rolls up, destroy the other tank ASAP, as he can kill you. At that point, it doesn't even matter so much if an ally steals your kill if they go after the dude with no breach. It matters if you live and that your allies live. In much the same way, help allies. If you see NPC planes on your left, and a fighter chasing your ally on the right, always go for the plane chasing your ally. If it's numerous planes chasing your ally, get into the back of the conga line and do your best to shoot them down, or at least shake them from your ally's tail. I don't care if I see a bomber that just flew right next to you, always help your allies. So you are not only more likely to get kills this way, but your team will also be much more likely to win. Same goes for ground forces. Always check around you, especially in the heat of combat, to see if you can repair an ally. That same ally will oftentimes return the favor and either cover you, repair you, or both. Plus, you get extra SL and an award. It's a win-win. And on top of all that, if it's not already obvious, if you win, you get far more RP and SL than if you lose. So it really helps to help your allies in any situation possible, because if you do that, you will win much more often. There are so many players out there that have great stats, but they have a low win rate, and that's because they are not team players, they're only looking out for themselves, but in the course of helping your allies, you will very often get kills and really make a difference towards getting everybody, yourself included, much more SL and RP. Just be a good teammate. You know what? I'm going to do a number six. Don't download War Thunder. Nah, I'm just kidding, guys. For my number six, don't get away from this video and not subscribe. Seriously, it helps me out so much. I would really greatly appreciate it. And uh, again, it's the biggest thing that helps my channel grow. Either way, though, seriously, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like this video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. I hope you didn't dislike it, but if you did, let me know so I can improve upon how I make my videos. Either way, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.